Hi there friends, this is Sharon from Mad Paper Crush. And today I wanted to make a little pocket that I could put in the back of this journal. So I didn't have anything on the back cover of this journal and I thought it would be fun to make this envelope to go on the back. So it has a little figure eight closure here. And when you open it up, you can keep lots of goodies inside of there. And this is great because it's made from old packaging um, and some book pages. So I think this is a really good one to do if you have some packaging you wanted to use up. And we're even gonna be making a template for it so that we're going to do it all from scratch. So I hope that you'll join me today as we make this fun figure eight closure envelope to put inside of a journal. Okay, so for this project, you'll need your journal that you're going to put your envelope in. So I'm using this one. And then you need to find an envelope that fits, obviously, on the inside of your journal. So I found this little return envelope and we're going to use that. I'm gonna be using just some old packaging. This was from a stencil that I had gotten. So I have this nice big piece um, on the back here that I'm gonna use to create my envelope. So it'll be nice and sturdy when we put it in our journal. And then I'm gonna be using some of the basic tools. So I'm gonna probably be using my cutter. I may, just since this is a little bit thicker, I may either um, use like a craft knife or my scissors to, to cut that piece out once we get it going. And then I'm probably gonna mostly be using my Fabri-Tac glue because I know this is nice and strong and will hold everything the way I want. And then I'll probably be using some um, distress inks on this as well before I put it in my journal. And then I'll also probably be using some brads of some sort. Um, I'm gonna, I want to make one of those figure eight closures. I'm not sure exactly what you call them. So I'll need some string. And then I'm also probably going to be using my half inch circle punch to make the circles that will make the discs that go alongside of that figure eight closure. So that's what we're going to use. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my envelope that I'm gonna be using as my template. So I just have like a, it's a little metal ruler here. You could use like a letter opener or something like that um, to just, I just want to be sure that I have it mostly intact and I'm gonna get the glue off of the sides here of this envelope so that I know the size and everything that I'm going to make my envelope. So you can see I have that open now. And this part doesn't have to be um, perfect. We're going to trace it and make our template. So here's my envelope that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to make sure that it fits on the piece of packaging that I'm using, which it does here. And let me just, I'm going to grab a pencil to trace, um, trace it. And usually what I like to do when I'm um, tracing onto a template um, or actually anything where I'm sort of putting two pieces of paper together is to give myself one less thing to cut straight. <laughs> I put the edge of whatever I'm doing onto the edge of the packaging that I'm going to trace on. So I have one straight edge that I know is going to be here and actually I need to move this over just a little bit so that I don't um, go over the fold here. So I think that's about perfect. And then what you could do if you wanted to, um, mine has a little window here. I'm just gonna take a little washi tape and put it down um, over that window so that it doesn't move. You could, if you don't have a window, you could put tape around the outside and then just move it when you get you know, to that point that you're tracing. So I'll maybe we'll do that as well, just to make sure um, I have this held down pretty good while I'm tracing around it. So I'm just going to start on one side here and just very lightly try to, now this is, you know, it's just a paper envelope. So you kind of have to hold it down to be sure that you're getting, um, you know, the edge there pretty good. And then let's go ahead and actually, I think I'm gonna turn this so that it's a little easier for me to do. And now that I'm at this side, I'm just going to 
take my tape up and I could even put it over on this side if I just wanna be sure things are held down good here. Okay, and now before I take the whole thing up, I'm just gonna tape the bottom here so that I can pull the envelope up and just make sure I got everything. I didn't miss, <laughs> I didn't miss a line, which, you know, that would be typical of something I would do. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we can take that out. And I think um, because these lines don't look like they're, there's too many of them that are really straight, I think I'm just gonna use my scissors to cut the whole thing out. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. have our envelope all nice and cut out. And I can see I missed this curve pretty good here. So I'm just gonna go back in and touch up any places that look like <laughs> they might need it. <laughs> so, and since this is um, packaging, there is writing and stuff on the one side. So we will use this as the inside um, of our envelope and we'll do some covering up of some of that stuff. So now I need to make my fold lines and I'm going to use, you could use um, a scoreboard for this if you, if you want to. I'm going to use um, my scoring tool here and a ruler, so either one. Now, this is gonna be the inside, so I want the folds to fold in this way, so I'm going to do my lines on the right side of my envelope. So based on um, this envelope here that we were using, I can see I need four score lines and they're just around each of the flaps here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna line up my ruler from corner to corner on each one of these edges and create a score line. So um, let's see, I'm using my metal ruler and I'm just going to line it up as best I can from corner to corner and maybe even I'll use the lines on my mat to kind of make sure I'm in the right spot. And then I'm just going to run my um, scoring tool over this a couple times. I don't think one time will really do it. So we're just gonna do a couple times there so we have a nice little ridge. And then I'm just gonna go around the envelope and do the same thing for each one. Line up corner to corner. and then score it. Okay, now we have it all lined up and I'm just going to make those folds now so that we can test and be sure our envelope is going to fold the way we expect it to, which it looks like it's going to just nicely here. And I like the way that looks. So if I get my journal out, you can see here, once we get this all put together, we're going to just glue it into the book here so that we have a nice opening. Now, I do think one thing that I'm going to add is a little notch oops, in here using um, a punch. 
I like to have a little notch, it, you know, shows where the envelope is and things like that. So my envelope is, looks like it's about, what is that, seven and a quarter inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, seven and a quarter inches wide on this flap. So this is the, the fold up flap, not, not the opening flap, but the one we're gonna glue down. So before I glue anything down, I'm gonna add that punch, um, that notch right in there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of line this up evenly across um, my boards here. And then I'm going to, two, three, I think this is going to be three and three quarters in the middle here. Although I don't know, that should probably be one, two, three and a half. If I do three and a half, whoops. This will give me a half, one, two, three, yep. Yeah. So three and a half is the center. Even though it's seven and a quarter, I kind of centered the flap in between my seven inch line so that I could do a three and a half mark as the center. So this is just a gauge. Some of you probably are pretty good at eyeballing this kind of thing. I am not, <laughs> so that's why I'm doing this. And then I'm going to line that mark up right in the middle and make myself a little notch right in there. So I like the way that looks. Okay, so now before, another thing that we wanna do before we put it together is we want to um, cover this up a little bit so that you can't see when you open the flap, you don't see um, all these words and things. So I just need to do it on the flap portion and then down just a little bit um, into the envelope so that it goes below this notch. Okay, to cover up this portion, I'm just gonna use some book page because I always love the way book page looks. And this one is long enough to cover the flap and down as far as I need it to go. Um, and I don't mind that it's going to be sideways. So um, since this envelope is going in the book this way, I thought it might be fun to have the book page, you know, sort of right side up on this side as well. So before um, I do this, this, packaging. I don't know if you can tell from the picture or from the video, but this packaging is a little bit shiny here. So um, I don't want to just glue it right down. Usually what I like to do is I like to put some score marks in this kind of thing so that I'm sure the glue is soaking in and will stay um, when I adhere it. But I, I think I'm going to sew it anyway. So you can glue it down if you want. I'm gonna, th I'm gonna go ahead and sew this on. And then I think what I'm gonna do is cut it down after I have it um, sewn on there. But just to make sure it doesn't move when I'm sewing it, I am just gonna put down a little bit of glue right in the middle, um, just to be sure it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue there to make sure it doesn't move. Oops, and I'm gonna make sure I have it right side up too. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to be sure, and actually, maybe what I'll do, yeah. you know what, let me do this, friends. I think what I'm gonna do is let me, cause I like the words showing, and this has a, a big margin here. So I'm just gonna cut down um, the margin so that the words go right up to the end of the flap. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut off the excess um, from below. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be lined up here and I know that I only need it to go down to about here. So I'm just gonna make a little mark. You can see my glue is not <laughs> quite dry. I wanted to stick down there. And so I'm just gonna cut this part off as well. So I know how much book page I need. And then the other thing that I want to do, I don't want this to stick yet. So I'm just getting that glue off of there. The other thing that I want to do is I want to um, cut out the side so I know, you know, where it needs to go. So I have this lined up right along the top edge and then I can get my pencil again. And I'm just going to mark where this needs to be cut off. 
so that I can do that as well. And then the last thing I'm going to do after I cut this out is create the fold um, so that I don't get a big wrinkle when we get it sewed down. It will be right where it needs to be. And actually, I think this can go off like that. All right, let's see how I did here. But I want to be sure I am cut it down enough so that my side folds um, won't get in the way. And this side looks a little bit long here. So I'm just going to cut off a little there. Let's see if that does it. That looks better. And this one over here. Okay, so I have this size the way um, I want it to go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again put some glue on here and I think I'll just use glue stick this time. I'm going to line it up right where I want it at the top of the flap and just put glue stick below the fold so that it holds it where it be where it wants to be on the bottom half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and put it by the fold and just fold this over so that we can get a good idea of where the fold will need to be. Whoops, that wasn't right. When we stitch it down. There we go. So now when we stitch it down, we'll be able to fold it over to where it should be there. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this and I'll be right back. Okay. I sewed it around and I used a zigzag stitch on three sides and then the side that will be hidden I just used a straight stitch. So my envelope will fold like this and you, you can see we have our book page here. Now when I did fold it over it, it, I did get a little bit of a crease there but that's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my distress ink and I'm going to distress around all of the edges of the book page. So um, I'm just going to go all the way around here. And then the other thing that I'm going to do while I have my distress ink out is distress the outside of the envelope as well. As you can see now, I have a nice distressed envelope. The only thing I didn't distress was the back since I'm going to be gluing this down. And I kind of did the whole cover of this um, packaging. It's kind of has a gray um, color to it, but I wanted it to look really, you know, old and distressed. So I went ahead and distressed even the front, you know, sides all along, all over. So it looks like, you know, it has finger oils on it and it's been sitting around a while and that kind of thing. So that's what we've got so far. Now we're going to make our clasp, um, our attachment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of the scrap packaging that I had cut out my template from, and I'm going to use a half inch hole punch, and I'm going to create, um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut out six of them. So I have three for each one, but I may only need two, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut six of these out so that I have um, enough to work with there. 
So, and we will need to distress these two, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue, and I'm just trying to feel if that feels thick enough. Two might be good. Um, this is pretty thin um, packaging, but I think two might be just fine. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two and glue them together, and we'll just put these aside for now so that I have my pieces ready for my attachment that we're going to do. So I'm just going to use my knife to score these a little. As I said before, I like to be sure that my glue is um, really attaching well. And I'm gonna glue those down like that. And then I'm going to score these up a little. Okay, I'm gonna take my Fabri-Tac here and just put a little on. And then put my other one on top and I'm just going to just kind of move them around a little bit to spread the glue a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure that they're nice and aligned. And then we'll just put these aside to dry if I can get them off my fingers. So we'll do the same thing here, a little bit of glue. And I'm just gonna move it around to get the glue to the edges and then line them up. Smoosh them together a little and we'll put that aside to dry. Okay, while those are drying, I'm going to mark my envelope so I know where um, to put my discs to make our closure. So um, once again, I do think I want to just kind of make sure these are centered as well as I can. And so uh, let's see, once and a half, or I'm sorry, this is just a little over seven and a half inches wide. So now this time I will put my middle mark here at three and three quarters, I believe. So this is one, two, three and a half and three quarters is here. And that would be three quarters, one, two, three. Yep. Okay, so that's my, my center mark there. And I'm just gonna line these up so I kind of have an idea. I wanna put one disc here and then I'm gonna put the other one like in the center of the flap there. I can remove my one little mark there. Okay, so I know where my um, holes are going to go to put my discs together in. And obviously we wanna do this before we glue the whole thing together um, because we are going to be putting those discs through my packaging and through the flap there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and punch these holes. So if you have a crop a dial, it's about um, a the 1 8 inch hole that you can use. Um, there's also small hole punches that you could use that would do the same thing there. Um, I have this memory making, making memories tool that I like to use um, for you know little little things like this. So it's just a, a punch that we put together here and I can just line it up right on the hole that I've made and make a hole there. We'll do the same thing in the flap. And now we have our hole ready to go. And I'm gonna be using these little, um, they're kind of like eyelets, except they have a, a flat top, no hole in the center. So they're kind of like a brad eyelet. I, I don't know exactly what these things are called, but this is what I'm going to be using to actually put our discs into um, into the envelope here. So now my discs are pretty good and dry, so I need to make holes in these as well. So grab my, took that out oh, too soon there. And then I'm going to try to put these, um, the hole as centered as I can um, in this disc. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to try to line up the disc as well as I can on this little um, score here. And then I'm going to make my hole right in the middle. 
might be a little bit off, but hopefully it'll be close. That's not too bad. So we'll do the same thing with this one. Try to get it lined up pretty even. Middle to middle, top to middle, down, bottom to middle, all that good stuff. Okay. So now I have my two discs ready to go with holes close to the center because I, I know that they're not centered, but <laughs> I tried. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna um, distress these a little bit before we, we put them on so that they match, they match the rest of um, the envelope here. So we'll just give them a little, a little ink here to distress them up a bit. All right. Now, I also am gonna need my string because I wanna be sure this gets um, on as well. So the string, so one of these discs will just be um, the disc with the brad in it, and then the other one will have the string to actually do our wrapping for the closure. So I think I'm gonna put the string on the flap portion. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of it so that I, I have some ready to go. I'm sure I'll probably cut it down, um, but I wanted to have something to start with here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my brad in with my disc there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. So I'm going to punch the brad, the rivet, eyelet, whatever this thing is called. And then what I can do is I can add my string. So what you do to add the string is very simply put your string around the brad that we just set in there. And we're just gonna give it a little tie so that knot will be hidden underneath our disc. And if you'd like to double knot it, you can do that too. And then this also helps raise the disc just a bit so that when you're wrapping it to close it, it's easy to kind of get the um, string around as you go. So now you can cut this piece off if you want to. You could leave it long if you wanted to as well. I'm just gonna try to cut it down real low so that you can barely see the end there. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I'll do it close so that it only has one, one string coming out from underneath here. And then let's go ahead and set our other disc. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to put this through the hole and go ahead and set that eyelet brad. Whoa. Okay, so now let me put this aside and we can just check and be sure that this is going to do what we think it's going to do. I always like to do that. And I think these little threads, which I usually love to have, are going to drive me crazy. So I'm going to cut those off of this one. And now the first couple times, it may take you a little bit to sort of get the thread underneath the disc until it, you know, we get it to a point where it's nice and raised up. But you can see now I can make my figure eight on here for the closure. And this is nice and long, so we will go ahead and just cut that off a little bit so that it has it there. All right, so that is good. We have that ready to go. We have our notch in here. Now all we need to do is we need to glue this down and then get it into our journal. So. 
I'm gonna use my Fabri-Tac. And because the flap that folds up here doesn't quite go to the edge, I'm going to put my glue on these sides here um, so that I know I'm going to make sure I get this glued down and not go over, not go over the mark. So I'm just going to go here, one bead of glue there, and one bead of glue here. Make sure I don't have any, there was a stringer that was going across there, so I don't want that on there. Now there's stringers on my hands. Okay, and we'll just hold this down for just a second and let it dry. All right, now that this is all dry, we can put it in or you could decorate this a little bit. So I do think I want to add a little, let me find my labels. I think I wanna put a label in here and let me see if I have the color that I'm looking for because I don't think I could use the brown one there. Actually, this one might be nice, let's see. Oops, well, that's too big. So I wanna find a, a label that's a little bit smaller. I could put it this way, but I think I'm gonna just, I know I think I have some printed. They just aren't cut. So I'm going to pull those out and see if we can find something we want in there. Okay, these are from my um, vintage label kit. And I think this one might work. Let me just see if there's any other one that might be fun. Actually, this one might be nice since it um, I sewed here. It has kind of the fancy edge. I think I might like that one too. Or maybe even this one, because that one has a decorative edge as well. I think maybe let's do that one. So I'm just gonna cut this one out. And this is from my vintage label kit. I will link that down below if you're interested in checking out those labels to use in your projects. Okay. Before I glue it down, I am gonna add a little bit of distress to this, definitely to the edges of everything, but I may just add a little on there too so everything kind of matches here. And I like that. So let's go ahead and glue this down. And then we can bring this project in for a landing. And I used packaging for this envelope, but you could certainly use cardstock. Um, just something a little bit heavier to make sure when you put things in there, you know, they um, stay put and you have a nice sturdy envelope. So you don't necessarily have to use um, packaging. You could use decorative scrapbook cardstock. Um, you could use manila folder. You could use hanging file folder. All of those I think would be great options for this as well. All right, so there we have it. So I'm going to um, go ahead and close this up just to, so that everything stays together when we glue it down. I didn't do that very well, but. So now I have my journal here that I wanna put it in and I'm going to put this right on the back side and I'm gonna center it right there. So I'm gonna glue the whole thing down Although you could definitely leave that, you know, you could leave a, um, a side open for a tuck or, you know, two sides open, you know, for a tuck this way. You could leave it open on, on this side if you wanted to. Um, because this is kind of heavy, I think I'm going to glue it all the way down.
And then I'm just going to hold this in place for just a minute to make sure that it starts to stick. And then we'll be right back. And there you have it, friends. We have a nice homemade envelope from packaging that you could take some ephemera and just keep it right in there, right in your journal. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video, friends. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel so that we can craft together every week. I hope that you all have a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon. Take care, friends. Have a good one.